Harum du Jeden. Einmal. Balkans Calling. Voices from the region. Welcome, everybody, to uh, the new series Balkans Calling, Voices from the Region. So today we are here, um, Jelena uh, jorgacevic Kisic and Klaus Buchenau, uh, to talk about each other's books and to say something shortly about us. Um, <clears throat> Jelena uh, uh, is a um, doctoral student of mine. And she is also a journalist from Serbia, working for the weekly Vreme. And um, <clears throat> as a journalist, uh, she has um, published a book in this year, uh, which is called in Serbian, Jedni smo drugima na dobro dati, devet razgovora o sebi i svima nama, uh, which is a book um, with a clergyman of three confessions from the post-Yugoslav region. That is... Um, Uh, from the Serbian Orthodox Church, uh, from the Catholic Church, uh, and from the Islamic community. And the second thing is myself. I am Klaus Buchenau, a professor of history of Southeastern Europe at the University of Regensburg. Okay, so we go ahead. Dear Jelena, first of all, to confess that I liked your book very much. Nice confession. So don't expect me to be smart and critical. But still, you know, uh, why did you decide to do this book? Okay, uh, well, as, as you said, I, first, I'm happy to be here and I'm happy that we talk. And the translation of the book, uh, it could be something like we were given each other to do good, something like that. And then uh, it, it goes with uh, nine conversation about ourselves and uh, about uh, all of us, actually. Uh, so... As you said, I'm a journalist, and I, I deal a lot. I, I write a lot about religion, and not, not just write. I talk a lot with the religious representatives, with the believers. I, I, I report on religion in its different aspects, and also in, in this scholar field, I'm dealing with religion as well. And but what I noticed in in Serbia, as I work for a secular uh, weekly, that there is two dominant narratives and one says that the one gives church just all the negative characteristics and religion it's backward it's violent it's pro-war it's guilty for the, the the conflict in former Yugoslavia it's and so on it's out of uh, anachron and so on and so on and while the second one is let's say very apologetic so the Church is the guardian of the national identity, and of course, it can be, it cannot be wrong as such. So between two of that, we have a lot of nuances. We have a lot of interesting stories that are very valuable for the the, the whole societies. You know, because there were, there are voices from the religious communities. They are very, let's say, peace oriented, oriented toward the others. Uh, that are very concerned about the future of the, how you call it, Balkan or the region of the Southeastern Europe, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and I wanted to give them space to send their messages. But what I didn't want is, you know, that it sometimes when we speak about dialogue and, and reconciliation, and it's very often those are so empty words, you know. You don't have said authentic people who are really there. And, and they don't live that, and that's the problem. And then we uh, stopped believing in the very content of those words. So I, I know these people, I followed their work for years, I heard about them from other people, and actually they, they really live what they are saying. And they're, in this book, uh, I presented their lives. Some of their lives are, in a way, it can be called Tragic, there were victims, but they don't accept victim position, which is important to emphasize. And their stance on various issues. And of course, they don't agree on everything. They don't agree on many things. And they have a quite different background. And a lot of things is different. But what is common, I would say, it's that they, it's not just that they are making bridges, they, they try to be bridges themselves, which is actually hard because you are going 
counter the, the dominant dominant uh, streams and, and and dominant narratives so um i got that point and i read these interviews with great joy because basically to tell the listeners also what this is about these are lengthy interviews and um uh, the partners um they um, have the possibility, for example, to talk about their childhood. Uh, they tell a lot about their biography and how they basically became what they are now. And they have a possibility also uh, to talk about what makes the difference. Why are they um, the frequently the only ones that um, are ready to serve as bridges, that are ready to, um, to leave the collectivism and the limits of the own group um, with the risk of being judged by the others uh, just to meet those on the other side. Um, but what kind of character you need to be in order to be elected for your book, you know? I th always had this feeling they are very different, but they have something in common. And I would like you to, to describe this. Uh, I would like to that you describe that if you find that common trait. Uh, but yes, what is what is interesting about them, you know, there, there is a play between that minority, minority majority issue, who is minority and who is majority. And and many of them are, uh, some of them are actually minority in the, in their, in the countries where they live, but they're also, as you said, minority in their own community. And that is not easy. Uh, you know, you can hear sometimes in Serbian public how some of them actually are, flirting with um, some, let's call it, liberal ideas in, ideas in order to get attention. Because, but come on, it's, you know, it's extremely hard to be on that position. So no one is doing that just because of fun and, or because wants attention. Because if someone wants to be praised, he will choose safe road. And they didn't choose the safe road. And what I find, uh, uh, what, they, what I find is common denominator or whatever, it's that um, that inner feeling, that uh, inner uh, sense, uh, that inner feeling of sense, of some kind of mission, that what their religion asks them to do is actually to approach other, and that idea that they are there, they are here, in order to do something good, and th that is that is very important. They're quite aware of that, and also what is important, they're very self-reflective. And that self-reflectivity also reflects on uh, on their the way how they see their own communities. And they're critical toward their own communities, but of course they love, you know, the, 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 where, the, the places where they're grown up, their people, neighbors and everything. But they kept that possibility to be critical, to question yourself, which I find extremely important. You know, because that's the only way that any of us can, you know, become in a way better, can 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 think about, okay, what I'm what I am doing now and how it influences others and why they behave the way they behave. Is it something that I did or something like and in, in that sense? So that that's what, what I say. The sense of mission, self reflexivity and that possibility to criticize yourself and that amount of love which they show. And I would say, and I could feel that after the mm. interviews, you know, okay. those are like inspiring in that sense. You, you, it's, it's, you cannot fake it, actually. Okay, I think you, you got it. Uh, maybe to our readers, it might be interesting who these people really are. And now I'm just going to read from the contents. Maybe some of our readers, listeners will um, mm, then be able to connect it to people which they have perceived. Um, priorly as figures of public life. There is the Mufti uh, Efendi uh, Dedovic. Uh, is the Mufti of? Uh, in Mostar. Of, of Mostar, Mostar, right. Um, Episcop um, Grigorije Duric, Serbian Orthodox Episcop in Germany. He's a bishop, yeah. Mm. Serbian, Serbian Orthodox Church. Not Stanislav Hotsevar, who was the um, Catholic Archbishop Arch of Belgrade and who is now retired, right? Yes, and now he's in Slovenia. Uh, Mufti Mustafa Efendi Yusuf Spahic, who is um, the Mufti um, of Belgrade. Episcop Ilarion Lupulovic, an Orthodox bishop 
And I have forgotten the upper key. He is now as a vicarni. Um, the, the 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 he is now in 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 Belgrade as the vicarni episcopus. So he is an auxiliary bishop. Auxiliary right? bishop of the patriarch now in this okay. very moment. But he used mm-hmm. to live all all uh, for years in in Kosovo. Mm-hmm. Fra Marco Orsulic, who is a publicly well known Franciscan uh, priest in Bosnia Herzegovina. Um, Jakon Branislav Rajković, uh, whom I did not p- perceive before. You can say something about him? Yes. Uh, uh, Just uh, his you know, whereabouts. Uh, he's born in Mostar and now he's, uh, so he's deacon of the Serbian Orthodox Church. Now he lives in Trebinje. But the, his story, I can, uh, can, I can say a few, few sentences about his story because I find it quite valuable actually mm-hmm. uh he uh, his parents are are killed by uh in in the in the war in former Yugoslavia uh by Croat army and uh he was 10 back then and he then he they they moved so the, the uncle took he uh, Branislav and his brother to Serbia and then he 10 years ago he came back to Mostar and his story is uh, very painful but very um inspiring in a way that he w- he became the person who is really uh, trying to do uh, a positive work in terms of interreligious and international in inter interethnic dialogue and you know when you ask him about many many things he said how we can talk about people about nations because in that period when uh, when his his father and mother were killed he was also in the village with his grandfather and the whole family and there was the Muslim population, they um, uh, knew that the Croat army will come. But there was a neighbor, one neighbor, who was uh, Bosniak, and he told them, just go away, something will happen. And he saved the lives of the whole village. So he said, how you can talk, ask me about the people if you have a lot of people who are Bosniaks, who are quiet, who didn't want to tell us a word so we could possibly all be dead, but also there was one who saved all our lives and they belong to the same community, you know, so it's not, we cannot generalize. And what is also special, he says that he's talking about remembering the victims, but not remembering the one who did it. And he uh, he insists that on that, that insisting on victims would actually create one a uh, spiral of violence and revenge. And for him as a victim, although he would never call himself a victim, but just because of that, is something that we have to prevent. So remembering the victim, but not, he said, not remembering the evil. And that is, yeah, that is his, he's the youngest among mm. the interlocutors. Well, I think this is a very mm, interesting thing for, for the German public, which has, um, its own cults of victims, which also amount to a certain German civil religion. I'm talking about the Holocaust. Um, and, um, well, for, the, for Germany, this has worked well. Um, but the, 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 the problem about the connection between, you know, constantly remembering victims and awaking feelings of revenge is something which is probably uh, a general possibility that this may happen. Um, uh, when the v- remembrance is done in a certain in a certain way, so and he's sorry sorry for interrupting. He says that they, in the family they talked a lot about uh, his parents, of course, mm-hmm. but they never nur- nurtured the hate, and that is the difference. They spoke about people whom they love, who passed away, and they remember them, of course. And he now he has two kids, and he speaks with uh, his kids about their grandparents, but they, it's not, it was not accompanied by the uh, hate toward the one who did it. Yes. Okay, uh, Jelena, I, uh, we interrupted here at the point of Jakon Branislav Rajković, but I must remember two more mm-hmm. um, like protagonists of your book, which is the, um, the Mostar Franciscan Fra Iko Skoko. That was the last chapter I uh, read only yesterday night. Um, and uh, the Catholic Bishop uh, Mate Uzinic. Yeah, uh, now he's Archbishop. Archbishop in this moment. Archbishop. Yeah, yeah. Not Biscop, Archbishop. Yes, excuse me. 
So, um, to ask you one question, um, are these people liberals? I mean, this might be interesting for a German, uh, no. since uh, the idea of, of, of ours or these transformation societies were, well, you know, if they became like us, secularized, open-minded, liberal, then uh, it would be very easy to find uh, a way how to communicate, how to reconciliate and everything. Um, but um, my guess is um, that when you look at these people, this is not their common denominator, it's, the liberal. It's, some of them could be described, if we describe in that manner, but I wouldn't like to do that, but if we, some of them could be described as liberals. Some of them surely are not. And all of them, I think, are open-minded, as, as you mentioned, and no one is actually secularized. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, what, is, uh, what is also important that uh, also when I think about your question is not to put people in this, you know, uh, in these drawers like they are the liberals, so that means that. They are like that. That means that. That doesn't mean anything. Those are, you know, human beings with all, like, all of us with all the complexities. And the second thing, uh, Fray Ikus Koko said one nice thing. And he said, you know, if you have some idea which are perfectly good ideas, but if people, if you go too fast, no one will follow you. And then what do you have? You will be the, what, the leader and no one is. So you have to go forward, but to adapt the speed of your, let's call it like that, of your walk with your with the people, if you're, you know, representative. So what does it mean? If, for example, if some of them would be, let's say, very liberal, but if people do not feel that, if the members of their community do not feel that in that way, then what does it mean? They will distance himself, uh, them, he will distance himself from there. So it has to be some kind of balance. It's a balance about if you're representatives of some, of some community, like religious community, it's a balance about what you personally are, but also what you are for your community. So you can, maybe that is the, the some, some notion I wanted to mention about your question and the liberalism. So, let's ask you a question about Serbsko-Hrvatsko. Да то, да, извините, драги слушатели и слушателице, Браве. че съм тако назвал е, език, то е сбог не умеча мога. Значи, мое питание е такво, ща ми можем да урадимо, да би смо таквим градителима мостова помогли. Ер, е, из те книги е, произилази да они су ipak u svojim um, religijama, verskim zajednicama u manjini. E, I nije uopšte sigurno um, da će oni kao biti kao glavna struja koja će postići tog pomirenja čega mi svi kao čekamo. Tako da ipak ja sam se pitao kako da ih podržimo. Na način da reakcija ne bude obrnuta. Da, za, zato sam si nasmijela kada si to rekao. Ne znam da li nekad za njih dobro da ih podržavamo ili nije ponekad. Ali e, hoću jednu stvar da kažem. Ne, oni najverovatnije dugo vremena neće biti većina. Sada si rekao možda neće biti. Nažalost, ja sam još pesimističnija. Ali to ne umanjuje njihov rad. U smislu većina u, sa njihovim stavovima da neće biti većina u regionu. Ali to nimalo ne umanjuje ono dobro. Naprotiv po meni to uvećava ono dobro što su oni postigli. I na kraju oni to čine iz svoje potrebe i, 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 i spoznaje da to tako treba, da njihova vera to od njih zahteva, da odnos prema drugim to od njih zahteva. Tako da ja mislim da u, u tom smislu da će makar jako dugo oni biti manjina. E, ali, <coughs> izvinjava se, <coughs> došla sam malo bolesna iz Beograda. Međutim, ono što, znaš, svako može da uradi nešto iz svog ugla. Ja kao novinarka pokušavam da im dam prostora, pokušavam da učinim njiho, da se, pokušavam da učinim da se njihov glas čuje, da oni postoje, da oni kroz te priče, da se dođe do nekih ljudi koji možda isto to osjećaju, 
vernika ili ne moraju da budu vernika, teista, ali prosto ne znaju da postoje ovi ljudi koji tako misle, koji tako tumače stvarnost i ja sam imala predivne reakcije ljudi na tu knjigu. Znači, prilazili su duboko potrešeni i sa onom, znaš kako kažemo na Lewis Carroll, čitamo da bismo znali da nismo sami, pa sa tim osjećajem da nisu sami. I to je, tako da, eto, moj odgovor je više što oni mogu da urade za nas, a možda možemo prosto, eto, da da se trudimo, da im dajemo prostora da se njihov glas čuje. To je ono što mi sad prvo pada na pamet. Dobro, iz toga ja sam izvukao da mi treba da im ne smetamo, da ih suviše ne pričamo, da ne dolazimo sa raznim fondovima, znači da ta podrška ne bude agresivna, a da ona bude kao tiha, baš u duhu tih istih ljudi. Da budemo i mi pomalo kao oni. E pa tako, da pravimo svet malo boljim. Thank you, Jelena, very much for this talk. It was a great pleasure. Unsere Podcast-Empfehlung diesen Monat. Wir wollen keine Helden sein. Nadezda Beljakova über politischen und religiösen Widerstand in der UdSSR und Russland. Ein Podcast von der Fakultät der Theologie und Studie der Religion der Universität Zürich. Vielen Dank fürs Zuhören und bis zum nächsten Mal.